To begin to understand the importance of the handsaw in the traditional workshop, let's take a brief look back into woodworking history. Prior to the 1700s, much of the furniture built in America and England was primarily made from riven oak. It's not clearly documented in the historical record why this is, but saw technology at the time may have played a role. When we look at the historical information available from the period, most of the saws shown are of the framed variety with thin, narrow blades. Saws that weren't framed like these bow saws here had short, thick, narrow blades like this one. The thick blade was required to keep the blade stiff in the cut. And while back saws like these were available, at least according to Randall Holm, they weren't as common as frame saws and short saws without backs. Framed pit saws were available, but sawing wide boards took much more effort than riving did. Riving utilizes tools like axes, wooden and iron wedges, and a fro to split wood rather than sawing it. Now, riving is a much faster process than sawing. However, it tends to result in boards that are quite a bit narrower than sawing, and not all woods tend to rive well. Using riven material, the most common methods of construction at the time were mortise and tenon frame and panel, or turned work like the legs of this chair. And while tenon shoulders would have been cut with a saw, the riving process would result in grain that was very straight so that the cheeks could be split off instead of sawn. So there was really less need for specialized saws. After the turn of the 18th century, during the time referred to by English and American furniture historians as the William and Mary period, the use of wide sawn boards became much more common. We also start to see a greater variety of woods being used, like walnut, cherry, and mahogany. And these are woods that don't ride very well, but they're much more easily sawn than oak. Dovetail joinery also becomes much more prevalent. And these changes were all made possible, at least in part, by improvements in sawmaking technology. By the mid 18th century, saws that would be very familiar to us today were being made in large numbers by firms like John Kenyon and Company. These new saws came in a greater variety of sizes and configurations to deal with less predictable grain, more varied joinery, and more delicate components. They could saw three-foot diameter logs into boards or cut 32nd inch thick veneer with surgical precision. Production of this style of saw still continues today. Our modern saws are direct descendants of 18th century English saws, and they truly are the most important tools in the shop.